How's it going, everybody? It's good to see you here. We have a few things on the agenda today for our, our university uh, working group call. Um, so I'm going to share my screen real quickly. And Stephanie, I had you kind of first, just in terms of the Fosse birds of a feather. Yeah, no, good. Cool. Want to try to organize that? That would be cool. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, and I, I forgot about the, your, uh, the, the Linux Foundation Europe Summit, the, uh, the, what that call, that submission was, topic was very similar. So I thought it, uh, yeah, actually does that, Claire and you, everyone who organized that is, doesn't mind me. Uh, I mean, I won't, it won't be the same, but I mean, like having a very similar topic over it. Um, I actually thought it'd be like a good idea, right? Okay. <laughs> so That's um, what, we're all about uh, the reuse, Stephanie. We're all about the reuse. reuse <laughs> collaboration. Different, different group of people. So uh, I, I know I can't make it to the, the Europe one. So, um, yeah, so I will, I, so I, I was hoping, originally I was thinking a panel, but um, I wasn't sure we would be actually able to make it to Fozzie. So I didn't want to make a assumption that we could do a panel. Plus a buff would be actually nice on this subject, I think. Um, so I kind of like the idea of a little bit about what we're talking about, just under like talking at it a little bit more generally focus and, and we can focus a lot on what these discussions are like that bring in a new audience um and also um it's cool michael's on the call because i was also trying to figure out how to do some of the discovery aspect of it into this i actually wanted to try and do a panel on that but again wasn't sure who was going to be there so didn't want to like create a whole panel on you know discovering open source in academia if like it was like me there so <laughs> and we you know considering Fossey's call is so short um i think i had like less than 10 days to figure it out yeah, um soon. what it is soon it is really soon oh. um i figured if we just kept it as a panel or a boss that we'd be in good shape so um but yeah so are you i assume you're going we'll stephanie be, what i assume you're going yeah 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 yeah. we're going um i'm putting in a either a panel or or a talk on the UC network activities because Patrick from Imperio asked kind of asked us to do something on that. So I said okay. Because they're there so Patrick is I think he did he post it on yeah he posted it on our, yes. our Slack because mm -hmm. um, the, they're they're the ones organize helping organize that one that track. So um but yeah so I, I don't know who is who is actually planning on going to Fosse from this group. I'll be there. I'll be there yeah. Anyone else? I will not. Anyone no, else? I won't be there. Um, so maybe in that case, a, a boff is kind of the way to go. Yeah, maybe do you, do you have to submit boff. a boff, or do they just what? allow you to do? It? Do you have to submit it, or do they allow you to do it just on site? Do you know? Do they actually uh, have boffs? They had boffs last year, so but it's not. You don't see it when you when you put in the form. It's like you know you have kind of session times, but not exactly. They don't specify boff or panel, so I'm just gonna. Um, uh, I think I'm just going to put in boff in the title <laughs> and go and go with that. Um, I can double check with um, the Perio folks uh, how they would like that approach, but um, a good strategy. I, <laughs> um, I mean, I just rather not call it a panel if I don't have other people on it that I know for sure. Yeah, but but you're right. I think that if they are running, I mean. I felt like last year they had a slots open so people were able to do boss at the last minute. But um, I, I, I mean, I would like this topic to be on the agenda. I think it'd be really helpful. Do you wanna? Do you have a document at all? No, not for this one yet. No, I can. I can but I can create. Some. I can help. Yeah. Okay, Just cool. I'll start. Event. I'm actually also looking at the the July 11th event that. Um, What's that? That OSPO plus plus is putting together. Oh, sure. Um, because there's a workshop on this topic there too that I, gay organizer facilitating. So I'll probably be tapping a little bit of what's going on. Okay. So there, I have. So I'll probably start there and look at what the Linux found. What like um, the what we're doing for the you guys are doing for the European summit, and then um, kind of create something that's more buff feeling to it. And then, yeah, I can post it in the Slack. That'd be yeah. great. I'm happy to help with that. And Claire, do you have the slides that I don't know what you submitted, or like the the document that you submitted? I'm guessing that 
I do, yeah, and I shared that in the channel, but it may not still be there. I'll find it and send it to you again, Stephanie. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. thanks. It's, it's, it should be way up the thread, but I'll find it. I'll find it and send it here. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not feeling that it's a really, I think with the, I mean, I don't think that it's kind of what, whatever you put in, they'll accept at this point, but I do feel like they're, if it's a good, like, I don't think that they're, they're, they have a lot of, they're going to have that much volume of things to choose from at this point. So and not that I don't want to make something nice, but I'm, yeah, a, I'm not too worried about how, <laughs> I'm not too yeah. worried about the draft, like how the draft comes off. If it's, as long as it's good, you know, and, and yeah, they, no. it's I think we're okay. So, that's cool i won't be there but i'm definitely happy to help stephanie yeah, cool. to just is anybody is anybody from chaos gonna be there hold on Elizabeth. sean you're gonna be there Don. oh what yeah. Don. Don. Don will be there yeah Sean's i won't be at fossey yeah, i'll be at fossey yeah. okay we were yeah, i was gonna say don needed to say that sorry and then you know, like okay cool so yeah like that that's probably that's that's the quorum I could like as long as somebody for like don or somebody else from gosh fossey's here we're good so yeah that'd be cool okay yeah. Um, okay. All right, thanks. Yeah, you bet. And um, I just curious, Claire, was yours a talk or is it a panel? It's a panel. Panel, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, great. All right, so today, uh, David has, I think he was feeling inspired, which is awesome to kind of <laughs> I think I was voluntold. I think you're voluntold. <laughs> asked. You had the idea. Yeah, it's great. What did you I do? spoke I mean, up. I'm I'm learning not to speak up. I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> I'll introduce it anyway. Okay, go for so, it. Um so really the question and you can kind of guide me if I'm if I'm not getting it quite right, but the question is how do we understand you know, like social impact of of the work that's occurring? Uh, in universities, I'm guessing for this case, particularly around say open source or, or software. Um, and honestly, this is something that I had told Stephanie um, and David that we we had actually talked about this in the chaos project, like what would be metrics that we could use or ways that we could understand social impact. And it does, does Sean or Don, do you remember this? It proved to be terribly difficult to think about how we consider social impact. So, um, I'm not yeah, I remember it. Time. It was, there was, there was a lot of other things going on the last time it came up. Um, and that was in kind of the muddled old value working group where social impact and like a dozen other things filtered through that group over time. So it, I don't, I don't disagree. It's difficult to measure. Um, but this is a group that it would seem might reasonably want to measure it. And I think there's a lot of interest to think about it <laughs> to make that. Yeah. Connection. So mm -hmm. um, maybe in that classic sense, how could we start thinking along that path? How'd I do, David? That was great. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I feel wholly unqualified to talk about this, but I, I love academia. Can I just tell you, I'm so excited. This is all new to me. I went to a public interest technology all day conference last Thursday. And then I was in a webinar with the India code for gov tech for three hours yesterday morning. And then I just got off the phone on, on a digital solidarity meeting with US State Department people discussing global policy. And so I'm coming like I have this like big thoughts, let's change the world everybody. So <laughs> like just scope may be a yeah. challenge with, <laughs> Let's do this with, thing. <laughs> with how I want to talk about this, but I'm, I'm just, uh, some of the conversations were incredible. There was a delegation from South Africa and we we're talking to people from India and, and there, and it's, they're just, I, I'm, I'm excited for like how we can work together um, and solve some problems. There's so many like-minded people that, that want to address this. So I'm going to share, can I share my screen? Yeah, hold on just a second. I'll stop and then make you um, co-host. Give me just a second here. Oh wait, can um, I think I can? I can. Share. Somebody you should be able to just share in this channel. Let me. Uh, and you, David? I just made him co-host. Okay, all good. I see everything. Okay, um, so I've captured the goal that you had put, Matt, um, when you previously tried it. Um, 
it is a hard problem. I was I've been thinking about it, it a lot recently, very recently. <laughs> um, I'm wondering this morning. Um, yeah, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> last night, talking with my family on vacation um, mm -hmm. about it. Um, I have some big questions right out of the gate. Is it worthwhile? How do we scope it? Um, I'm, as I've mentioned, I'm kind of on this soapbox about uh, like how do we share better? Having a three and a half year old and then seeing people when they graduate college, they all are like, mine, 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 get my job, get my house, get my car, get my fancy stuff. Um, so I'm trying to figure out, okay, so, and then there are some interesting quotes in, in the panels. One was about research is not rigorous until you, you really get the community involvement, the people that you're researching uh, to define the, the protocols. I really like that quote. Um, and then in the Go code for GovTech in India program, which is mentoring open source projects, um, they were saying we really need to unbundle, unbundle form from purpose. The, they're really focusing on digital public infrastructure, which was something that was new to me, but I really like that. And I feel like it aligns nicely with open source. They had this slide. I'm sorry I'm going all over the place, but I hope you'll be there with me. Um, they had this slide that they put up, up that I really liked. On the left side is the government approach that for, for managing big you know, digital infrastructure. And um, it tends to be inefficient and it's, you know, sovereign governments have control over it. Um, and then there's this big tech approach where we see the walled gardens and, and you know, the capitalist greed and sometimes they just shut it down if it's not making them money. Um, and there's this new approach that they're sort of trying to flush out um, where you have governments, but maybe I actually don't love that. I mean, you need governments, I think, to help regulate, but I like the idea that you push it down a layer and it's more uh, a co-op ownership model or some kind of some kind of ownership or government's model where the users, the people that are getting the service, whether it's Facebook, whether it's GitHub, whatever it is, the users are the ones that are making the governance decisions and have ownership over over it. So GitHub is one of my big concerns right now. It's like at some point, is Microsoft going to just pull the plug if it's no longer making making money for them? Um, you know, it's it's like we're all using it. It's a great place, but it's not publicly owned. Um, so, okay, that, those are the thoughts spinning around my mind. And then I'm trying to figure out what kind of metrics do I care about in this society where I want to encourage sharing. Um, and these are some of the, just some of the metrics that I came up with. Um, I know when I connect with people like you and communities, sincerity is like one of my number one things. Like, are people just BSing me, trying to, to get one over for some agenda or, are they passionate about whatever the problem is at hand? And I've worked with different communities over my career. And if, if you're all, if you're working together towards a common goal, it's so empowering. Um, and I feel like we need to curate the spaces so that that's so that we expect that um, openness, transparency as as something as a metric. Um, you know, we're we're seeing with OpenAI. ChatGPT, different levels of openness in the AI models, um, interoperability, really all of the FAIR um, principles, I think, are apply. And if you can figure out metrics to evaluate them, and I think there are. Um, yeah, we've and, had that conversation prior with the FAIR group. So uh, point well taken, I guess. And I agree with yeah. you. Um, and then inclusivity, um, accessibility is... Inclusivity, I think there's a lot of interesting ways to measure that. Like you can see, do they have code of conduct? Do they, do they have, um, you know, different readmes and where they're, where they're encouraging contributors um, in con 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 encouraging that? Um, and then maybe even, I don't know, it gets a little bit hard if you're like measuring race and gender, but you can start to do that potentially. Um, Accessibility, is it publicly available? Is it affordable? Is it assistive technology um, for, for disabled people? I really believe it needs to be user driven if you can measure that. Um, and then from the research side, reproducibility, obviously accuracy, quality. Can you verify that it's giving you 
answers, um, you know, back to sincerity, trustworthiness, that it's that the tools, that the technologies, that the infrastructures um, are giving are, are you, you, you can rely on them. Um, and then security and then obviously sustainability, you know, which Richard and, and we are all very concerned about is that it's going to be around tomorrow and if I'm going to commit to it. Um, yeah, so those are just some of my thoughts. I think there's a ton of metrics. I don't know how to, I don't know how to capture them or prioritize them. Um, yeah, one of my thoughts. I'll stop talking now and get thoughts. I have a question <laughs> or a comment. So, um, so from your perspective, is it about how to help, say, the projects that are at your university think about these things, or is it about um, things that you would look at? for an open source project that you might rely on. Does that make sense? They're, the directionality is a little bit different. Yeah, I, I was scoping it, not scoping it. <laughs> so, so I was thinking from a, a user perspective, from a government perspective, like at a really high level, a societal perspective, how do we pick and choose how to fund, how to encourage, how to give them a stamp of approval, almost like a, this is an organic, a organic project, you know, get, get some kind of an auditing system set up yep. that, that says this is, you know, this, this, this follows, has good ratings on some of these metrics and let people decide for themselves yeah. then going forward, what to um, do, whether to fund those projects or whether to invest in them or whether to use them. I gotcha. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Claire, did you have some comments? It's more Sorry, it was, it was the, 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 the two backwards then. Um, I've seen similar lists actually where people have been discussing similar things or in panels and things and good governance is sometimes put in there as along with that list, it's kind of a hold all. Um, but I'm just gonna put in the comment that when I think about the idea of when, when, I, when I first heard the topic and, I, and you started on things like sincerity and trustworthiness, I was thinking about this research report. I, I read about the fact that participants are looking for fun experiences. That's why they keep coming back. Now it's tied obviously then to sustainability because if you if you if people have fun or if they're feeling a, like they're having a good time by contributing to a project, they'll come back. I don't know if maybe governments would be interested in hearing that fun is a metric that you're measuring, but I don't even know how to measure it anyway. I'm just throwing that out there because I thought, I, yeah, look, it's a measure of how much this group is affecting me that I thought, how do you measure fun when I heard that? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. When I was talking with my my brother, he he immediately went to like the happiness metric that some companies are using. In, you know, and so I think that's completely valid. Yes. yes yeah. I mean, I was turning it a little over to like how I'm looking at it from a maybe from a academic like how do we show this value in open source. And using the term value in it i've always kind of said when i talk about value i'm not just talking about the economic side but what, like the overall like what's the mission of the university and so i think that's an interesting one to look at too is that when we're talking to like say not the entrepreneurial side of the university which is who i in interact with the most but like the other side some of the humanities departments these are i think where it would be good to have something where you show the value of that this is part of the mission that we're trying to accomplish in open source is one of the methodologies for reaching that. And so I think that that's actually something that makes, um, like, like if we could figure out a way of showing, you know, a, a highlighting and showing that in a way that kind of reached, like say the non startup folks or the not the folks that aren't, you know, creating something just to create it like, um, even if it's not a commercialization side, but you know, from a straight technology perspective. Um, anyway, those are my thoughts when when uh, when John brought the or sorry when David brought this up to st start out with. Um, that, that was kind of what touched me with the the, the discussion was that yeah, how am I uh, talking to folks who are in my, you know, my arts and humanities programs versus how am I talking to because the folks that are in engineering maybe like get it a little bit more. Um, I also. I don't know how other universities are, are, are dealing with this, but I know there's a huge push within our, even our engineering department about um, you know, social impact of the work that's being done. Um, AI is one thing, but also just does anything with regards to how it impacts the environment and all that, all the other issues that are 
that are involved. And I think that this would be kind of an interesting way of approaching this discussion as well. I really like that. I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, we're as we're growing our. We're, I'm trying to make the. Um, we're, we're, we have a stakeholders group that meets every two months, and I'm trying to get attendees from every discipline, every school, um, at least at GW. And we got um, somebody from the Corcoran Art School, and the questions that that, that he's asking. Our, and we, we, have, we also have somebody that's uh, in, in literature and in Shakespeare, English in particular. And it, the, the questions that both of them bring up are, are fascinating and, and eye opening. And yeah, really makes you, they're very excited about open source and sharing, but, and they're not deterred. They're a little nervous, I guess, about some of the technical things. Um, but, but, but yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, the art um, person wants to, to have a wall that is a demonstration of what open source is um, where everybody can can draw or paint or or whatever and and part of it is having a code of conduct having some governance model you know how do you curate that and and that's part of teaching them how open source works um, and i think it's a really cool model i'm we're going to try to roll it out in the fall it'll be really fascinating to see <laughs> if it if it you know how it parallels uh, you know, an, an open source repo or or how it differs uh, i'm fascinated to, to see how it works that's a super interesting idea just like in general <laughs> i really like that how do we make sure in this crazy political climate that it's <laughs> not something that we have to paint over <laughs> every day <laughs> because of all the political craziness I hear you um so I'm, I'm wondering, so one of the things that we do, what, what made me, what I was thinking about when I saw this list is um, metrics can be used as a way to um, kind of look at things like after the fact. So you can look at, you know, say like, I know it's not on your list, but like community responsiveness by taking a look at the trace data that has occurred within a community over the course of say six months. So you're looking at obviously that online trace that the community leaves behind. Um, another thing that we've been doing with metrics is as a way to get people to think about um, particular items and articulate what it is that they're trying to do to say address interoperability or to address inclusivity. So I'm, I'll put this in the chat. This is our <clears throat> DEI.MD template. It's a little bit different than what you're talking about, but it's asking projects to consider four metrics that we, we have together within the chaos project. And those four metrics, like we don't necessarily measure them, um, but they're ways that communities can represent how they address, for example, inclusive leadership. And so in this case, the metrics are really about getting projects to reflect on things that, that we believe help kind of center DEI within their project. You know, and I'm wondering if, if we could ask, if, it, if it's ever reasonable to ask projects to, like you have a metric say around interoperability, for example, you know what I mean? And we define what interoperability is and we, um, give some reasons why interoperability matters in, in the list that you have here and asking projects to kind of reflect on how they would address interoperability and as they, as they, as they seek to grow, you know, so it's, it's more of a reflection process than, um, trying to take a look at online trace data to determine interoperability. The, it can be a nice process for the communities themselves, but it doesn't necessarily, I don't think it would necessarily help what you were talking about, like how helping funders identify particular characteristics of a project. So I just, I thought I'd put that out there and as, a, as a possible path forward. I, I like that. Um, I, I, when I was first put inclusivity down as a metric, I, I immediately was thinking of the DEI readme. Um, like just the fact that 
um, a project might have it. Yeah, it might okay. be something to to measure. You know that they're further along. Not that all projects should have it. Like a you know obviously a private project doesn't doesn't need it, and, and we don't want to burden people with so many requirements up front. But sure. you know as they get to a certain level of maturity. Um, I think there's a nice model somewhere where, where where there are like a list of the different readme's. What I have that somewhere actually. Or like as they get to a certain size kind of thing, that they should probably start considering a new set of characteristics like that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. Oh, here, here it is. Yeah, so this is like the different documentation that you should include in a repo. Sure. And based on the different tiers, when you should get it. So like DEI and D yes. could be in there, and maybe you don't need it until you're. I gotcha. You know, two, yeah, this two, is a two, really two, nice three. list. Have people seen this list? This is from Remy the Cosmakers Group. Yeah, I really like this. It's really great. <laughs> yeah, Remy does some really amazing work. Yeah, but I agree. And with interoperability, it's the same thing. You know, maybe you have some level of maturity on a project, you know, or a special certain types of projects, mm -hmm. um, bigger framework kind of projects. You, you can you can start to have some readamies that are, you know, I guess I want I want people to start leaning towards principles <laughs> in the world <laughs> that we live in. I'm like people. I'm just missing principles in our a lot of our discussions, and so if, if you're like making what? thoughtful decisions, I'm just you know people are just misleading us in that and just saying whatever for short term gain, and, and and it seems like they flip flop, and I don't know. So I'm just I like okay, these are the guiding principles that we're following, and you know maybe we're not quite there yet, but but we're all shooting in the same direction. This is what we're 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 hoping for. And having those written down and and you know whether you're there fully is 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 okay you know, you're just you're trying i'm wondering taking a look at this list that you're showing here the scaffold scaffolder list and um the list that you had on the on your notes that you were you know first showing Oh, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do encourage everybody to take a look at this. I really, really do. It's good. It's really great stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, can you go back to that, the first list that you had? So, like, I'm wondering if, if there's anything here that could help contribute to that scaffolder list. Like you had mentioned, for ex I'm not pushing it, but like the DEI.md file. You know what I mean? Like if you're a tier four project, you might want to really think about how to best center DEI. So I'm wondering if there would be a way for us to, to just work with Remy's team to get a few of these off the ground. Yeah, and I know his team's automating some of this as well, so. There might be a path, like a, a slightly better path for us to get some of these things. And I know that I think, isn't one of the students your former student that works? Yeah. With John? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac. Yep. An auger maintainer. So. Yeah, no, I think Remy'd be real open to working with us. I think he can't like commit a lot of time to it, but he's very open about sharing and facilitating stuff. What I'm wondering, like what I would think is, and again, I'm not pushing the DEI.md file, but like where there would be like a, a PR where we're like, you know, on tier four, one of the things that we do propose <laughs> And it's probably the DEI.md file obviously doesn't have enough um, like enough reach at this point because it's so new. Mm -hmm. Is everything on that list, David, from Remy, is it all like a standard file? Like code of conduct.md, governance, contributing. Can go back to that list. Yeah, I think it is. Um, shoot, where'd it go? Code owners. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that might be a little harder. But I mean, I think you've been very thoughtful about building the DEI IMD and, and it applies here. I think it's great. I mean, would that fit with kind of, 
does this help at all with kind of what you're trying to accomplish? Like, yeah, and maybe there's some stuff? fair, you know, yeah. things that people have already set up with respect to interoperability and findability mm -hmm. that, you know, re reusability that, that could be contributed here added as that maybe they've already done some work i'm all about reuse so yeah yeah and contributing some... to a place that is already like out there a little bit like we mm -hmm. had, we had some not that we want to get it you know scary and make people like oh my gosh i have to do all this stuff <laughs> i like the end like the ends <laughs> no <laughs> no you do not. <laughs> don't do this not recommend it I think this, is, if I'm not mistaken, this is like an internal process. Sean, do you remember when Remy talked about this? Did yeah, well, this is what, so what they're trying to do is facilitate these kinds of labels across uh, US government open source, beginning with uh, Medicare and Medicaid where Remy is centered. And so he's socializing a lot of these ideas and their team has developed a tool that will like kind of automatically classify repositories um, along these lines. Uh, into the categories that you presented. So that's what's happening with it. It's, uh, but the influence process is very much advisory. So they're trying to show the way instead of telling people what to do, if that makes sense. Have you been part of that at all, Sean? Or yeah, I've been in, I've, I've been talking to Remy about it uh, about once a week for the last two years. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I don't, I mean, I'm sure he'd be happy to talk with this group about it if we asked him. Like he's a very open person on that kind of thing. I would love to talk to Remy or meet Remy. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me, um, his best friend. let me connect you in Slack. <laughs> awesome. One other big dumb thought I've, um, been having is we had just some real philosophical conversations about what is data and i started to realize for as a data engineer for my whole career i think of data kind of just as a spreadsheet i'm a simpleton <laughs> and i know it's a lot more than that everything around us is data and people were talking about that and i was like whoa okay cool but then i started to think for me data like when i think about it in a spreadsheet and, and when I think about metrics, I don't digest those um, on their own. I don't digest data, even though I'm a data engineer, software engineer, I love, I love me a table. <laughs> um, I don't get it until it's in a narrative form. And so I started thinking about metrics and about data as like, okay, how does it, how do you figure out, you know, choose the data to then tell the story? And I, the, then I started to think about metrics from a storytelling perspective. And I'm like, okay, I wanna be able to find the open source projects that are gonna be around, that are, you know, gonna help. And I, I don't, it just, it's a little bit different. I'm not sure how to get the metrics that then enable the story. The, and, and, and sort of, I wanna, you know, poke at Microsoft and some of these companies who aren't sharing well and figure out the metrics so that we can tell that story that, hey, you guys can do better. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't have clear thoughts on it, obviously, yet. But I'm... Have you looked at some of the um, viability metrics models that Gary has put together from Verizon? Because the, the viability metrics models, so if you if you look at the chaos metrics, we historically have been super focused on contribution metrics. So so what do you need to do to improve contributions to open source project projects? But within the OSPO working group, uh, we've been talking a lot about viability. And Gary's put together four, now five, because we have a starter model, uh, metrics models around basically how do you look at open source projects that you're thinking about consuming? So not from a contribution standpoint, but you know, I'm thinking about consuming these, these open source projects and what, what do I need to think about differently? So that might be, might be a way to maybe start to kickstart some of that thinking. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, one thing I've been 
thinking about to extend that is there's so many open source tools that we use in academia from Drupal for our websites to you name it. There's, you know, all the different tools that some are open, some are not that help us with course scheduling and all that stuff. Um, and I'm wondering, like, as the OSPOs, can we start to identify open source projects that we could then build intern programs around and, and consolidate some effort so that we could be building out a really powerful community of great new tools for academia that are open source and like point us in the right direction, get, you know, so we're not creating something from scratch, but we're, we're, we're helping to amplify and join a project that's already well underway and has a good direction. And we could just lend our, our voice to. Quietness. No, no. <laughs> um, Help me rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> But I like the idea. I was gonna say I do like the idea of like creating. It's I think the storytelling is. The, I think you brought it up, and then um, Daniel's comment kind of I think heads towards that as well. And in, in the Slack about um, you know finding that there isn't really a graph or like there it's not a not, you know in this situation what you're looking for is more the stories that talk to the people that either you know and and bring in the the, the contributors or bring in the 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 you know, the folks that you want to be as your kind of clientele or, you know, whoever your audience is. So I think that that it, and it's just a different way of kind of, it's much, obviously much more of a qualitative versus quantitative kind of approach. And I think, I mean, as, as a social scientist by training, I, that's kind of how I always looked at research is I looked at the stories and looked at the case studies and tried to make sure that I found ones that were, that had the most impact and, and showed the most impact of it, like a certain policy or something like that. So I think that that's, an approach to take is just a little bit different than what we're we've talked about before. Has anybody done that kind of approach? Have you done that, Stephanie? Or I mean, I think we do it just. We, I, I, it's a little. I don't. I, the systematic maybe is not the word I would use, but we do it. We like we look at stories and we tell about. And when we're reporting about the work that certain projects are doing, we talk about that, and that's one of the things we look at. Is like, well, who is it? Who is it impacting? How is it impacting? So uh, yeah, if there's actually a systematic way, aside from me just like, you know, writing up case studies, I'd love to love to see how that kind of what Daniel, if you when you say there are systematic ways of like what would you suggest? I was thinking of things like ethnographies, um, th that are basically like systematic ways of doing case studies, but you sort of create a structure around doing a set of case studies. So those case studies and those those narratives become a data set in and of themselves. And it's not like you can collapse those into a single numerical quantity, but you can build evidence around those. You can start um, extracting qualitative features from those. Um, and there are computational ways with <laughs> with uh, <laughs> language toolkits and large language models to, to do that in more automated ways. But um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's sort of where I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, when you have created these stories, have you shared them with, say, folks in administration? I think I mean, that, that's part of the goal. And we, ha I mean, we have, but um, I, I feel, and we were doing it, there was a period, especially when we had a, like a membership based model uh, at Cross, we were, that was kind of the norm because we were out, you know, talking. And it was not just our members, but our, um, but our, uh, but our like, our, our leadership as well. I mean, that was very helpful. And we stopped, we haven't, I, I need to go back to that. Um, we kind of had a transition in our, you know, in, in, in a number of different ways that, that kind of led me to stop doing it. But I think it actually is something that, and that we're actually looking to do now that we're kind of, you know, especially in the, from the OSPO's perspective, I mean, with the number of, you know, projects that are coming to me that are asking about, you know, certain, how to get support, um, it's a kind of nice, way of showing people um, what's going on on campus and and then what that impact of those those opportunities are so um yeah so moving forward i think we'll be doing more of, of those case studies and highlighting that gotcha. I, I, maybe this conversation i'd like to just point out the blog post that don put in there around viability because it seems to be i mean i 
certainly watch these get published, but um, yeah, so scroll down a little bit. Like there's a, just keep going a little bit until you get down to the metrics. So right here, metrics for OSS viability. Like there are a collection of <clears throat> things that can be understood quantitatively. For example, license coverage is something that you could try to figure out within a repository. But then there are certainly other things <laughs> that are not that way. Um, so, um, yeah, and what I really like about the blog post and the the models themselves is Gary did a really good job of explaining why some of these things were important, which I think would help lead you to lead you toward, you know, some some storytelling around it because you can you can talk about some of these um some of these concepts and why why they're important and what you're seeing with specific projects and and why it matters. You just have to merge all this information into your brain, David. <laughs> it's happening as we speak. I, I love this. Thanks. Your last two weeks, and now, now we'll just merge this all in one. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to come out, but... <laughs> you can merge it. You can squish it all together. <laughs> you guys are not going to want to sit near me in, in Vermont if anybody's going. <laughs> I like to talk it over in Vermont, David. I'll, I'll listen. Okay. <laughs> Buy the lake with a drink. Oh, yeah. That's the best way to talk about magic. That's <laughs> how all the work gets done. That's the path. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. This is a this um, is this is a good conversation. Do people have any like, kind of closing thoughts as we? I'm, I'm curious if some of the existing metrics that are in the chaos metrics are useful as sort of proxies for societal impact in terms of things like contribution attribution and being able to dig into those and sort of um, break contribution attribution to like demographic clusters or, or like being able to, you know, further dig into where those contributions are coming from and thinking of just the, the direct impact of, of having contributors um, from a broader yeah. range of, of folks be a proxy for broader societal impact. I don't know that like usage of the software is I think where I, my brain wants to go with right. societal impact, but it's really hard to measure that on a, a cross project level when you're doing very different things potentially. Yep. Um, that's an interesting point. We have, when you say like some of the metrics as a proxy, we've done this for um, DEI because there are metrics that are like clearly DEI related, you know, like they come from the DEI working group. Um, but there are a lot of metrics that hadn't necessarily originated in the DEI working group, but they um, they can clearly have an impact on the diversity, equity, and inclusion within a project, even though they didn't originate from that conversation. Um, and I don't think we've ever done anything like what you're asking. It's kind of a similar exercise by saying, sure, this ne wasn't necessarily categorized as an impact metric, but if you dig a little bit deeper, there's probably some downstream impacts that that stem from this that might tell an impact story. That's a that's an interesting conversation or an, an interesting observation. It's something we haven't done around impact. So thanks for that. Like yeah, that. we kind of did something a little bit similar if you look at the popularity metric, because we have a whole bunch of, of indicators of things that could possibly indicate popularity of a of a project. And and some of those could be could be potentially used in a similar way to what what you've just described but like matt said we don't have anything specific for it but but this might get you thinking about about how you might think about it okay. all right everybody i have a quick question is yes. chaos in the auditing business or have you thought about it you know uh, that you have a stamp of a, some kind of rating that you put um, on projects or repos no, no. <laughs> it's, We've uh, kind of uh, sought to avoid that, honestly. Um, so we have 
This is a, this is a really big question, just so you know. <laughs> um, and I'm happy to talk about it more. And I, if you, I really would love to talk about it more. And if you feel like um, there would be value in it, I would like to know how you see that. We are going down a process of ISO certification for some of our metric models. Just it's just as a way to kind of do that. Um, but ascribing value to projects is that's tricky. <laughs> No, I know it's like playing God and there's a, a lot of perils to it, but at the same time, it's so hard to discover and find, you know, projects these days. I know. And it's, we, so basically we struggle, I'm sorry, we're at the end of time, but we struggle with like the metrics, like being value free is sometimes not great because you just say to people, here's a metric, it's useful, you go figure out how to use it and why it might be useful in your particular context. So that's, that's in part helpful, but sometimes people look at that and they're like, I don't know what to do. Um, but then if we do ascribe value, we do get into that. We've been asked a lot to do like red, yellow, green kind of thing. And we've constantly avoided it. But I, I would, I am happy to, to talk about that more. <laughs> and if you see a path forward, I'd love to know it. <laughs> I don't have a solution. Maybe it needs to be a very separate organization. Um, Maybe it does. There's something like there's B certification for companies, and then they have there's a separate auditing organization that like says is a company you know meeting those benefit in that standards. Context. Yeah, they can kind and of localize the metrics a little bit more. Yeah, and it's it's almost a, um, the companies have to like apply to get that certification. So you know. It's an open source, that'd be a very strange model because there's just not a lot of funding and usually there's a cost to getting the certification and um, yeah, we, yeah. I, I just want to, I want to jump in here and say, it's always a bad idea. Like I've been involved in certification programs and it's just a whole load of pain, whole load of cost. And really, do you want to be going there as a certifier? You really want to be certified by a certifying body where you have to pay for the certification. Like once you start building that system, you're going down a hole of pain. I think personally, I, I, I really like the open chain approach because that's kind of like self-certifying. It's like, here's a standard, self-certify, say you've done it, we'll all applaud you. And it's really lightweight and it's brilliant. So I, I, I would recommend that approach. That's a good approach. So I didn't quite understand. Are you telling us to do it, Claire? No, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> For your own mental health. I gotcha. Noted. <laughs> Very well, like the standard <laughs> makers, not the checkers of the papers. <laughs> How do you really feel, Claire? <laughs> yeah. It's All right. Hard to tell. I really appreciated this conversation. That was really great. So have a great rest of your week and take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye.